What's up, divas? What's up, devos? It's your girl. Today is Real Talk Wednesday. We're going to get straight to this because, listen, I got to get to the post office. I got to mail out some units, some wigs that I have, you know, posted on the website. So I do need to get those out. And <clears throat> plus, I have to take my daughter to her doctor's appointment. So, you know, and plus, I really don't really have much to say, like, about myself this past week. I haven't really been doing much of anything but just working, working, working. Like, you know, working on wigs. So there are some that are left on my website. And the link is in the description box below. Um, and plus, I do have a hair video that I want to do right after this video. So I am, like, on a real huge time crunch. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to do the video. Um, but, you know, I think it is what it is. So with further ado, let's get into this real talk. If you have a real talk that you would like to discuss, you can always send me an email to Muffin is my lovers 2012 at gmail.com. Make sure to put in the subject line, Real Talk. And if you want to change the name of the people that you are referring to, you know, talking about, spilling the tea, um, gossiping about, you can always send, um, change the names. Let me know that you change the names. If you didn't, if you don't tell me that, 99.9% .9 of the time, baby daddies, baby internet daddies, I will change the name for you. So, there'll be one Real Talk today. And let's get into this real talk, you guys. Oh, first of all, let me tell y'all something real quick. Let me tell y'all. <clears throat> Today was a good day for my eyebrows because it did not take me three to four tries or just too, too timely to do them. And I must say, thank you, eyebrows, for, you know, cooperating with me today. Because even though they're not twins, they sisters, I'd be trying to get them to look like twins. Like... I really be trying to have them look alike. And the bitch has let her brows grow in, okay? They are grown in. I refuse to tweeze them motherfuckers. So if you ever see like a couple of little hairs down here, just let you know in fact beforehand. Let me tell you this. When I don't wear makeup, I do need my brows. So I do need my brows. So I am not trying to be tweezing them. I have went so many years with tweezing my brows, okay, and having to draw them on. So just having to just fill them in a little bit, honey, because... um. He's just filled in a little bit. I'm happy, okay? A girl is happy. So let's get into this real talk. But you can tell me how you, what you think of my brows, too. You know. Did I do a good job or what? And the eyeliner didn't give me problems today. Figure. Mm -hmm. I best to do a hair video. All right, you guys. Hello, Miss April. You can call me Simone. I have sort of a dilemma. A little background about me before we get into it. I'm a college student who is majoring in nursing, and my minor is sleep technologist. I work part-time. I work part-time at a hospital as a housekeeper, working on getting my CNA license. I am 21 years old and I'm working hard in school to create a life for myself and working hard at my job so I can buy me a car. I have saved $7,200 so far. I don't have my license, but I was willing to take some classes this spring once the snow clears up so I can learn how to drive. I do have a boyfriend who is 26. My parents haven't met him. I will get into that later who wants to spend a lot of time with me. Here is my dilemma. My parents are very strict on me for whatever reason. I am not allowed to sleep over my friend's house. If I go out with my friends, for example, out to eat or the movies, I have to come home before 10 p.m. I cannot stay out later or go to their house. Wherever I want to go, one of my parents have to drive me to that event or place. I am not allowed to take a lift or Uber to their home or not allowed to drive in the car with my friends. The only time they give me space and have me spend money on a lift is if I'm going to college and I have to go straight back home after class. I tried standing up for myself, but it always turns into a big argument. One day, my older brother, who is 22, just left around 5 p.m. and didn't come home until 3 a.m. And they didn't say anything nor care. He even took a lift to his girlfriend's house. My brother works in retail and that's it. He doesn't want to go to college nor want to figure out what to do with his life. He only depends on my parents. I want to tell my parents about my boyfriend because we have been on and off for three years and he is an amazing guy. I asked my parents, what if I have a boyfriend? And they said, you shouldn't have one and you are not allowed to have one if you are still living in our house. My parents are strict and it is driving me. <clears throat> 
My parents are really strict and it's driving me insane. I want to respect them and not argue with them, but I still want to have my own life at the same time. I even pay half for rent, food, do their laundry, and other cleaning around the house. Please help me, Miss April. I do not know what to do or my next step in figuring out why they are behaving this way. I tried talking to them to see why they're treating me like this, but it turns into an argument and then they have their way at the end. Even on my 21st birthday, they made me spend time with them out to eat instead of having a sleepover with my friends. I don't know what to do, and moving out financially is not an option for me right now. Please help me, Miss April. I would really appreciate this. Thanks, Simone. Oh, God. Well, basically, Simone, first of all, Simone is 21 years old. She still lives at home. She goes to school. You know, she goes to college. She is working on um, being a sleep technologist, I think, and she's working on her CNA. She's working on a lot of shit, and she also works at the hospital as a housekeeper. But here's the thing. She also pays half of the rent, half of the bills, does the laundry, cleans the home, and so forth. But listen... She's 21 years old. She still is at home. Her parents are overly strict. They don't allow her to spend the night out with her friends. They don't allow her to spend the night over her girlfriend's house. They don't allow her to take a Lyft or Uber to her girlfriend's house. They will bring her to wherever she needs to go, which I can only assume that if your parents are bringing you where you need to go, then they're on a time crunch. It's either, yes, I can take you or no, you cannot, or I'm coming to get you at this time. After class or going, the only way she gets to take a Uber or a Lyft is if she's going to school and she has to come straight home after that. Um, you know, it's basically, she doesn't need a boyfriend. She cannot have a boyfriend as long as she lives under their roof. And then we got the 22-year-old brother who all he does is work in retail, hangs out all night. The parents don't say shit. He takes an Uber and Lyft wherever he needs to go and they don't say shit. And he don't go to school. Seems like she is being caged in. She's... I feel like that girl is a hostage. Like, okay, so we got the 22-year-old brother who don't do shit, ain't about shit, ain't even trying to go to school and figure out his life, works in retail, stays out all night, and parents don't say shit. And then we got this one right here that's a hard worker, you know what I mean, goes to school, works, obeys by the rules, okay, helps clean. She did not mention to me anywhere in this email about her brother paying anything, half of anything, okay, nor did she mention him cleaning. And moving out is not an option for her. Plus, she has a boyfriend who she's been on and off for three years. And she wants to introduce him to her parents, but it's like, why even bother? Let me tell you something. I understand that moving out is not an option, but sweetheart, sometimes we got to sacrifice and struggle. If we really want something in life, like for real, we have to sacrifice and struggle. It's not an option sometimes. The options that we have are not options at some time. Sometimes we have to make our own option. OK, we have to make our own way. We have to get up and we got to figure shit out. Shit ain't always a bed of roses. I try to I try to instill this in my own case. Like it's going to be a struggle when you first move out. It's going to be a struggle when you on your own. It's going to be a struggle. Life is a motherfucking struggle. If it was so fucking smooth and easy, I, I, I'm pretty sure the word would not be called life. You know what I'm saying? When you think about the word life, because this is what I do. When I think about the word life, because I have to explain this to my kids a lot of times, like, you know what I'm saying? It's about life. This is life. It's a stepping ladder. You know what I'm saying? Life, just look at the word. Like, if you look at the word and you just say the word aloud to yourself, do you really figure out, can you really see that that word, the word life, is like an easy word? That shit is not an easy word. That shit right there screams struggle, screams, screams hardship, screams dedication, screams goals, screams motivation, screams determination, screams hard work. That shit screams all of that shit. And it screams ladder, ladder, because you got to climb your way to the top all the time. You don't just get to one portion of that fucking ladder and stop because you feel like you made it. No, you got to keep going. You know what I'm saying? And life is a struggle. Life don't always have the options that you want. There might be options there, like A and B, and sometimes that option C just ain't there. And that's when you got to make it. You have to make option C and D for yourself, because sometimes that shit is not right there for you. And when you learn that being able to handle your own and struggle, or not even struggle, but you have met your means or you have been able to learn on your own that I did this on my own, then you can appreciate it more. I'm pretty sure, Simone, your brother appreciate living there and not having to do shit. He might not show it, but I'm pretty sure he appreciate it. 
appreciate it for himself. He may not appreciate his parents doing that shit, but he sure appreciating that shit because he ain't got to pay for shit. You understand what I'm saying? Because there's two different ways of saying appreciate. Like, oh, I appreciate you helping me so much. And that person shows you appreciation. They show you that they're grateful. They show you that they appreciate that you've done something and you've helped them in some type of way. Then there's the other type that just be appreciative, like, oh, I appreciative. I'm so glad she she be taking care of me and doing shit for me. I'm glad my parents do this shit. I ain't got to do shit. That's the appreciation where they not showing no real appreciation, but they real happy and glad and appreciative that they ain't got to do shit and that you taking care of them. That's the appreciative. They appreciate that to themselves. That's that ingrateful, ungrateful, excuse me, selfish type of shit that I'm talking about. So that's the type of appreciation time your brother is on. And then we got you, who's a hard worker, who go to school, who go to work, you know what I'm saying, who help around the home, who pay for shit and obey by the rules, who is basically being treated like an 11-year-old. I don't even think I would treat my 11-year-old like that. You know what I mean? I mean, I am strict, but when you when you're 21, you, you know... When you have your child at home that's, that's 21 years old and they are respectable like Simone and they doing the right thing, honey, there is nothing to complain about. Let her live a little bit. I wish that were me. Girl, honey, there is a room here for you. All right? Seriously, there is a room here for you. Because, listen, your values and your morals, I sure wish that you can instill them on a lot of these young people today because they don't seem to understand where the hell they going, where the fuck they doing. They think they know everything. You cannot know everything, okay? Like my husband says, you don't know what you don't know. These these young people, they think that they know everything. And it sucks because those are the ones that be stuck at home and they just get, like, glorified and they just get whatever. And then not all of them, not all of them, because trust me, a bitch like me is not having it, okay? All right? But then there's the ones that are hard workers who show so much potential and so much motivation. And it's like, these are the ones that are constantly just kind of not being badgered, but kind of like being held on a leash. And I think in a way that your parents probably are treating you this way is because they don't want you to change. They probably don't want you to go and lean towards the way, the route that your brother is taking. <clears throat> And I can say this from personal experience because my daughter, even though she's 16, she'll be 17 in June, in June, she's a younger version of you. She goes to school. She comes home and she cleans. And she does her chores. She passes her grades. You know what I'm saying? She plays on her video games, you know, and she does all the respectable things for a teenager. Like, I'm so happy that... My daughter Nay is like the way she is because there are so many other young girls that are her age that have children, have dropped out of school, and they, you know, hanging on the street corners being ratchet. And she's not like that. So when you see that you have a child that is just like, in that way, a really great, hardworking child, you try to keep them that way. You try to push them forward and you try to keep all the positive in their life. And you look at some of the other children that you may have and you, you look at them and you don't look at them in like a, a negative way, but you look at them in a way that, you know, I love you dearly. You're my child, but I would, I, I don't want them all to follow in your footsteps. You know, each child is different. When you have children, more than one, their personalities and their ways are totally different most of the time. And so I know for me with five different children, they all have different personalities. And so I can't expect them all to be geniuses or all to be like, you know what I'm saying? Where'd you go? All to be like, you know, 100% this or 100% that, you know, they all have different personalities, but I do appreciate the fact that I have one that does this and I have one that does that. But of course, sure, I do would like for all of them to be about something and be about that and that, you know what I'm saying, in that spectrum of life. And with me, I always instill in her like, you know, do good. This is what you're going to do with yourself. This is how your life is going to be, you know, and I instill like the, the positive things in her because I don't want any negative things that she may see around her in my home or in her school or out in the environment to affect her. So, you know, we do try to push you guys a little bit further. And sometimes it may be that we come across as being very, very strict. And we may come across as being strict, but we try to keep that positive vibe in you. We try to keep that motivation in you. And sometimes it's unfortunate that we may have to give up on one of the kids or one of your siblings only because they show that they're not really willing to work hard. Listen, let me tell you something. 
I try to instill that shit in my kids regardless. I don't know how many times I might have to tell them something over and over and over and over and over again. But trust me and believe me, I'm not going to stop telling you because I'm going to keep telling you, especially if it's for your own benefit. And a lot of times when they are just so combative with you and they just, just don't want to just give in and do the right thing, we start to get a little bit numb. We start to kind of like push away. We start to back off. We start to feel like, you know what? I'm not going to help you do this and I'm not going to help you do that. I'm basically going to allow you to learn on your own, learn the fucking hard way. And unfortunately, you know, me, a parent of five, I've had to do that with the last two. I have instilled so much knowledge and so much that I don't know if I can keep instilling it. I mean, I'm definitely going to, but... I don't think that they are listening. So sometimes we have to take the other route, which is back off, step off. All right, you, I done told you, you shouldn't do it this way. You should do it my way or not even my way, but you know what I'm saying? Meet me halfway, motherfucker, meet me halfway. And those are the kids that's like, you know, hey, those are the ones like your brother who just sit at home and don't do shit with their life and ain't even thinking about it. You just want to work like a minimal job. like. Let me tell you, um, let me tell you something. I don't care if you got a job and if you're happy at that job, that's great. But you still need to want to strive and better yourself. And sitting around being lazy and doing nothing with your time is ridiculous, okay? And I think with your parents, they just being so overly strict and overly protective is probably for one, you're female. And I'm pretty sure they know how the world is today because, listen, the internet, social media, and fake friends is something that you don't want to come across as, you know what I'm saying? You just don't want to come across it like that. Sometimes a lot of this social media shit and a lot of this internet shit and all of this shit that we, we see, it ain't even worth it, but it can destroy a lot of lives. And I think like with females, sometimes it seems like it's easier for them to be so much vulnerable to like social media or the negative shit in life in general. And sometimes parents, when they do see that they have a young woman, a beautiful young woman, a smart young woman, they feel like, you know, let me protect her a little bit more than what I should because I want to help her just avoid all of that shit. But then you get to the part where it's like, listen, I'm 21 motherfucking years old. I do everything I, I'm asked to do, plus then some. And you still treat me like I'm a fucking 13-year-old, which is getting ridiculous. That's where I come into part and say that we got to make our own options. I understand that moving out might not be an option for you, but let me tell you something. It will help your sanity, girl. I'm not saying move out and get buck wild and go crazy and start having fucking house parties and having niggas over from tender and fucking and bitches over spending the night and acting rap. I'm saying move out and get somewhere that's serene and affordable for you. And you just have to get on your grind, sweetheart. Let me tell you something. Being an adult, being a motherfucking adult is getting on your grind. I don't give a damn what nobody fucking say. Being an adult, being an adult every single day is being on your grind, okay? Whether you get up and you go to the same job every motherfucking day, that's being an adult and that's being on your fucking grind. And sometimes as an adult, we don't have all the options that we want, okay? Because options are what we want. You know what I'm saying? I don't want two... Three, I don't want options. I don't want three options and all of them is negative that I'm not appealed to. I need an option on here that I can choose. That's why that shit is called options, okay? And sometimes we got to make our own motherfucking options, okay? Pick up more hours, maybe pick up another job, maybe pick up a job that pay a little bit more, you know what I'm saying? Maybe find one of your girlfriends that want to move out of her parents' house as well and y'all roommate together and be able to share the expenses together. Those are options. Those are things that you got to sit down and figure out. Those are things that you got to learn and fight for if you really want to be out of your parents home then you have to figure out these options on your own and you have to become an adult and say you know what as much as I love you mom and dad I'm an adult and I'm going to move out because this is not healthy for me all that shit that you're going through is toxic as a motherfucker I'm not saying you're supposed to be buck wild because you're 21 years old of course you're supposed to act like a young lady and be respectable however everybody needs their own space everybody needs a place where they can relax and invite friends over, spend the night out, okay? Enjoy yourself. You 21, not five, okay? And if you are constantly having a conversation with your parents about it and it's turning into an argument, that right there lets you know, sweetheart, 
it has come to an end. There's always an end to something, regardless if you say it's eternity, maybe not the earth, because that shit spins and spins, but there always comes an end to things. You think your brother is going to be able to depend on your parents for so long? He's not. Either they're going to get tired of that shit, or eventually he's going to be old in his 40s or whatever, still living with mom and dad. And, you know, as we get older, things happen in life. We pass away or whatever the case may be. He is going to come a time in his life where him mooching off your parents and living there is going to come to an end too. Regardless if that shit is 10 10 years down the line, that shit is going to come to an end. And just like your time being in your parents' home and abiding by all these strict rules and you're even at the adult age, that shit has come to an end. You have matured as a young lady. And unfortunately, and fortunately for you, you have realized, like, listen, I have done more than enough and I cannot take this no more. It's driving me insane. Why the fuck would you want to live somewhere that's driving you insane? I'm sorry, but I wouldn't give a fuck how much cheaper the rent was. I wouldn't give a fuck if I was able to, you know what I'm saying, have all these options. Is that you crying? Are you crying? Come here. I think my dog's over here crying. Are you over here crying? What are you crying about? Get your butt up here. You know what I'm saying? Everything comes to an end, unfortunately. Good or bad. Sometimes some people, some young people grow grow out of their parents' home before they even turn 18. You know what I'm saying? Because they feel like they've grown. They feel like they can do things on their own. Or they just the type of person or the type of kid that just cannot abide by the rules. They don't want to clean up. They don't want to pick up after themselves. They don't want to do anything. All they want to do is play video games, mooch around, and do nothing. Those are the type of young adults that, you know, of course, let me just, you go ahead and move the fuck out and go do what you need to do. You are one of those young adults who go to work, go to school, and regardless of what, your parents are still treating you like you are a fucking 10-year-old. Sweetheart, let me tell you something. You're going to have to make your own options in this one, for real. When I say you're going to have to make your own options, you're going to have to make your own way. You're going to have to figure this shit the fuck out, and you're going to have to move out. Because if you don't, you are going to go crazy. I'm sorry, but I'm not about to be living with somebody where I have to pay half the rent, I pay half the bills, I clean the fucking house, I do everything I ask for, and you ask me, and you still not let me do nothing, and I'm 21 years old, sweetheart? No. I'm going to just pack up my shit, and I'm going to move about about my business. Same thing here. Listen, y'all don't like my motherfucking rules. The door is right there. I say it all the time. Y'all don't like my motherfucking rules. There are three ways out. You can make four if you want to, okay? We got the front door. We got the garage door. We got the back door, okay? If you want to go out your motherfucking windows, then be my motherfucking guest, okay? There is fucking options up in this motherfucker, too. Straight up. So, in my opinion, this is my opinion, right? What about your opinion? You got an opinion? In our opinion, it's time to make your own option. Make your own way. Because I guarantee you, you're going to be to the point where you're not going to be able to have a normal sit-down conversation with your parents. Because you're going to allow all of this fucking animosity, bitterness, you know, hurt, build up to the point where there's no turning back. You will explode, honey. You will explode. And if you are 21 years of age, sweetheart, there's no reason why you should be held like a motherfucking prisoner. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not telling the girl to jump out the window and hurry up today or tomorrow and move the fuck out. I'm telling her to make her own options. Making her own options don't mean today or tomorrow. Making her own options could be next month, next couple of months, next year. Either way, the same way she saved up for that car, I'm pretty sure that she can save up and get herself an apartment, find someone that maybe is suitable to roommate with, like one of her friends, or pick up some extra shifts. shifts. But either way, it's not going to change. Your parents are who they are. They are set in their ways. They're older, and this is what they believe in. This is their beliefs, and this is how they feel. And if you have constantly tried to converse with them about the situation and it's turned into nothing but arguments, and at the end of the argument, your parents are the winners, meaning they got their way, then, sweetheart, there's no more talking left to do. The only other next alternative for you, the only other next option for you is to find your own option. Find your own way and do this on your own. And allow them to see Simone is an adult. Simone is an adult. 
She can handle her business. She can handle herself. She can handle these bills. She can handle her life expectations. She can still continue to reach her goals and meet your expectations as a child, as parents, and so forth. But Simone has grown up enough to where she's able to make her own decisions, her own options, and continue to love you as parents, but live on her own. Sweetheart, there's nothing like having your own. Trust me when I tell you. It's a beautiful thing. I, you know, me as a parent, I never thought that I would always be like, I, I would say this when my kids are younger. Like, no, I'm not going to make them leave when they turn a certain age. No, no, that's not going to be me. But let me tell you something. If they were so hardworking, not all of them, but some of them, if they were all hardworking and strong, motivated like yourself, Simone, then I wouldn't have a problem. But when you have those that are just like, don't really have any goals or motivation, it's like, you know, I would rather not you be around me so much because you bring me nothing but negativity, negative vibes. And me, I'm a person where once I get up in the morning, I'm up. I get up at 6.30. I bring my daughters to school. I come home. I work out a little bit. I'm not saying I work out like crazy vigorously to where, you know what I'm saying? I work out enough, bitch. I do enough, okay? And then, you know, I clean up, I straighten up, I take a shower, and then my day starts. Like, well, my day has already started, but the things that I need to work for start, like, around, let's say, 9 o'clock, 9.30. Um, if it's if I'm not doing a video, like, putting on makeup, then I'm good at 9 o'clock. I'm cleaning the house. I'm sitting down. I'm either editing a video or I'm making a wig, you know what I'm saying? And these are the things that I do. And I'm, you know, I'm saying I, I work towards that. I might be an entrepreneur, but I work for that and I do this all day constantly. And I hate to see that when I'm working so hard that you have young adults that live with you who are just so lazy and just really don't have any motivation. And that's what brings nothing but negative vibes around me. And it brings me to a place where it's like, you know what? I'm doing all of this for what? For you guys to be living off of me, to be mooching off of me, to be just using me. And then it's like, then I have these other two that are just strong-willed. They're motivated. They're doing what they need to do. If there was more children like yourself, Simone, that lived in a household that was respectable, that worked hard, you know what I'm saying? Then we as parents wouldn't even mind, oh, let her stay here until how old she is. I wouldn't even say to you, you can't take an Uber. You can't do this. That wouldn't even be me, you know what I'm saying? But... Each parent is different. Each household is different. But I know that we end up sometimes wanting our children to stay because of loneliness. You know, and though your mother is not lonely because you just say parents, so it seems like you have a two-parent household, she's not lonely. But then again, they may be so overprotective over you because you're a woman. And I've seen that a lot in other households that, you know, their demands and their rules are just so thick on the wall that there's like no way of chipping away at it. You know what I'm saying? They're just like overly protective. And then there's your brother who's a male, a male, and he doesn't have rules and, you know what I'm saying? He doesn't have, you know, goals like they would expect of you because he's a man. You know, it just, it, it all, it just all can be different things. And I think like for the best, in you for your sanity is to work towards making your own options, making your own way. So that way the sanity that you need to have, girl, you have that shit, you know, you'll be able to woosa for real. Like, right. Don't you think she should woosa? What you think? Cause I got rules, right? Yeah. I think you'll be able to woosa. It's nothing like having your own. It's a beautiful feeling. It's relaxing. You can get away from certain things, you can just like, you know what I'm saying? Just relax and be able to know, well, this is Simone's apartment. This is Simone's place. You know what I'm saying? This is where we're going to chill and we're going to relax. I could have my boyfriend over. As for your boyfriend, you know what I'm saying? Don't move here, man. If you decide to have your own options, I wouldn't say build an apartment or build an apartment life with him just yet. You know, you want to you want to get your feet wet a little bit and learn to live on your own, learn to adjust on your own without anybody or anyone else's rules but your own. And I say this because when you're in a relationship with someone, you guys may not have set down any rules, but of course there are rules, you know what I'm saying, when you live with someone. Um, and I think like for you, Simone, I think like you really need to build on saving up and build on trying to find somewhere of your own.
your own option. Make your own option. You know what I'm saying? So you guys, um, yeah, that's about it. That that, that one was just simple, easy to go. <laughs> There's no way to work around that one. You know what I'm saying? Like it is what it is. She's had multiple conversations with them. You know what I'm saying? It didn't work out in her favor. So what's left to do? Stay there and go fucking crazy. The next day we see her and it's a white jacket. One of them jackets, you know, the white jackets are, you know what I'm saying? Move out and get her own. Just, and I, I surely wouldn't want to see her go crazy. So I would prefer her to have her sanity. You know what I'm saying? So we going to go little baby crier right here. You know, I don't know. I think she just feel like she wants to make her appearance in my real talk videos. Like we needs to be, you know, like somebody needs to be talking to you all the time. You can show them you come up on here and looking all shaggy, dude. You look shaggy. You got no haircut. You looking all scruffy, dude. You hear me talking to you? Huh? Hey. 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 Looking all scruffy and stuff. You can't be coming up here on YouTube showing your scruffy side. Nah. Everybody be coming on here with their little dogs looking all pampered and stuff. And you looking all scruffy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She only look like that because I'm waiting for her hair to grow all the way out like some more so I can get her like a certain haircut. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to make I'm gonna make her be real bougie. For real. Right? We're going to be bougie. Bougetta. Right? What? Bougetta. Mm -hmm. So, you guys, I love you. Stay diva and deep delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, thumb this video up. And I'm going to see you guys in a soon-to-come video. I got to go package up these wigs. I'm going to do one video, and then I'm going to go about my business. I love you. And we'll see you soon. Say bye. Wait. You could do it. Like, wait. Don't be showing your nips, okay? You could get banned for that. Ooh, what was that? Okay, bye.